Preview. Preview. Now, this is actually uh, a concept that I had to combine uh, voice lower, chest lower, uh, Gelusa's lower, and also Avogadro's lower to form a particular equation. So, like I said, then the general gas equation combines those uh, concepts together. Now, when you're considering voice lower, voice lower is a law that talks about the relationship between pressure and the volume. Boyce's law, it talks about volume and pressure. And the law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure where the temperature remains constant. So, getting the uh, con the proportionality, removing the proportionality, you have V is equal to K over P. That will give us K equals V over P. Now, Charles Lower combines pressure and temperature at absolute pressure. So it's a law that states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature provided the pressure is constant. So removing the, the sign of proportionality, you add a constant K. So K will be equal to V over T. And also Gelusa's law, Gelusa's law is also a law that combines the pressure to the volume to the temperature at constant pressure. So Gelusa's law states that the volume of a given mass of the gas is directly proportional to the temperature provided the pressure is kept constant. So when you remove the, the uh, proportionality, you add a constant K, so you have K equals V all over T. Now when you put all these laws together, you have the general gas equation. So putting all the laws, the Boyce law, Charles law and the Gelusas law together, we get a general gas equation as this. PV is equal to PV equals to KT. So when you are considering two gases, when we are considering two gases, we have P1, V1 equals what? K, which is a constant, and T1. So putting this in form of a formula, we'll get P1, V1 over T1 equals to P2, V2 all over T2, where P stands for the pressure, the V stands for the volume of the gas, the T stands for the absolute temperature at STP. Okay, so uh, so this is one of the formula used in solving equations related to general gas equation. Okay, so we can also introduce uh, Avogadro's constant into the general gas equation, the Avogadro's law. Okay, so Avogadro's law relates the number, the volume of a given mass of a gas to, that is the, the Avogadro's law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to the number of molecules, the number of the molecules of the gas number of the molecules of the gas. So removing the sign of proportionality, we have NV at a particular temperature, V equals N 
RT, where R is the constant. R becomes the constant, and the figure is given to 8.643. So PV will be equal to the number of molecules, the rate constant, and the temperature. So remember that rate is the constant, which is given as 8.31. 8.31. So in a nutshell, therefore, using Avogadro's constant. General gas equation can be given as PV equals NRT, where P equals pressure, the pressure of the mass of the gas measured in millimeter mercury. The V is the volume of the D gas. volume of the ID gas measured in centimeter cube. N equals the number of molecules. Number of molecules of the gas. R equals the rate constant. The rate constant. And of course T is the absolute temperature T equals T equals the absolute temperature measured in degree Kelvin Okay, so as an ideal gas equation, okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take, uh, let's say we can take an equation or an example on general gas equation. So let's take a solution, an example rather. Example on general gas equation 200 centimeter cube of a gas at 25 degrees Celsius exerted a pressure of 700 millimeter mercury. Calculate the pressure if the volume increases increases to 
350 centimeter cube at 75 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what we're going to do here is uh, we bring up the formula for solving the general gas equation. Since it's an equation that has to do with the pressure, the volume, and also the temperature, so the ideal gas equation will be fit for this kind of question. So PV P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. So P1 stands for the initial pressure. V1 is the initial volume of the gas. T1 is the absolute temperature. Now P is the P2 is the final temperature, final pressure. The V2 is the final volume of the gas and T2 is the final temperature of the gas. Now we are asked to look for the final pressure of the gas if the volume increased from 200 to 350 centimeter cube. So imputing your figures into this formula, P1, we're going to, so let's, we're looking for P2. So if we're looking for P2, we can make P2 the subject of the formula by cross multiplying. So we have P1, V1, T2 is equal to P2, V2, T1. Now remember we are still looking for P2. So what we do is you make P2 the subject of the formula. And how do you do that? By dividing both sides by V2, T1. So you divide both sides by V2, T1. V2 T1. Now when you have these, you have V2 T1, V2 T1 here, so they cross multiply it, they cancel itself. So what we have left is P2 equals P1 V1 T2 over V2 and T1. Okay, so let's see how we can get the figures for each of these variables. Okay, P1 equals 700 millimeter mercury. V1 equals 200 centimeter cube. T1 equals 25 degrees Celsius. Now, but now since it's an absolute, it's a saturated vapor pressure and temperature, so the T1 will be converted to Kelvin. So while converting from Celsius to Kelvin, what you do is you add 273. So when I add 273 to 25, I would get 200 So that will give us 298 degree, degree Kelvin. T2, we do the same thing. It's in degree Celsius, so you convert it to Kelvin by adding 273. So 75 degree Celsius plus 273. So that will give us 348 degree Kelvin. Okay, so with this, our V2 is 350 centimeter cube. So with these variables here, you impute it into the formula and then I expect you should get your answer. So let's see how that goes. P2 equals, what's P1? 700 multiplied by V1, 350, multiplied by T2, 348. 
V1 equals 350, V2 equals 350 times T1 to 98. Okay, so uh, imputing those variables into the formula, we get P2 equals 700 times V1, which is 200 times T2, 348 divided by 350 multiplied by 298. So when you solve this, P2 becomes 467.11 millimeter mercury. So the final pressure is 467.11 millimeter mercury. Okay, so we can also look out for uh, an equation where you have to solve for the number of molecules. The number of molecules include, that's when you're adding the, the ideal gas equation. So using the ideal gas equation, like we said, PV equals to nRT where R equals the rate constant at 8.311 okay so let's say uh, a given mass 200 cm cube over gas at 25 degrees Celsius exerted a pressure exerted a pressure of 700 millimeter mercury calculate the number of molecules Calculate the number of molecules of the gas at STP. Okay, so solution. So what we do is we get out the variables and impute into the formula. So PV equals nRT. Now since you are looking for the number of molecules, what you do is you make N the subject of formula. And how do you do that? By dividing both sides by RT. So when you do that, N becomes PV over RT. So what we do is you get your variables and you impute into the formula. It's as easy as that and you get your answer. So N equals RP is 700 millimeter mercury. What we do is you impute the variables into the formula. And by, by so doing, we have P, which is 700 times your, your volume, which is 200, multiplied, divided by the rate constant, remember it's a constant given to be 8.311 times the absolute temperature. The absolute temperature, remember the temperature was given in degrees Celsius and you have to convert it to Kelvin. And how do you do that? You do that by adding 273. So T is 225 plus 273. So that will give us 298.
the Greek Kelvin. So you put this into the formula, 298. So when you solve this, you can, so 700 times 200 gives us 140,000 divided by this gives us 276, 2476.678. 